Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, and, and we're on the 55th Auto Hockey webinar. Woo, that's a lot. And interestingly enough, um, this is uh, the 55th one, but it's, uh, it's a mimic of the very first one because the very first webinar we did was really just a reporting on the Auto Hockey user survey that we completed. Um, you know, I should have I should have looked it up. I don't have it exactly in front of me. Maybe I did. Maybe I have it on the charts here. I can't remember. But it was uh, what was it? May of twenty sixteen, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it hasn't been quite five years. I think it's been coming up on almost five years. If I remember right. Um, yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and get going. Um, and there were 82 registrants, which is awesome. And we know, you know, the vast majority of people watch this thing because this is a global thing, right? This is late for some people. And um, I guess early, it's impossible it's early for someone somewhere. I don't know. Sure. Uh, the globe is 24 hours, right? So Yeah, I know. Well, I guess I guess it depends on, right, it, it could be uh, uh, in the wee hours, um, right? Because in China, yeah, they're always 12 hours opposite of us. So, right. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so you start off muted, um, not because we think that much of ourselves just as you can see when you get more than two people talking it's really hard to have a, a nice conversation so if you have any questions you can use the chat or you can uh you know i just say usually use the chat and say you have a question and then we'll either you know well um you can unmute yourself then we'll pause um or just ask the question in the chat i'll you know if if i'm talking jackie will bring it up and if jackie's talking i'll bring it up yeah and let's get going here so um here are the last four podcasts and this one jackie this one this one the the a oh am i sharing my screen yeah you are oh, good. Yeah. i lost the green little outline of it um mm. anyway um the ai slash gpt3 conversation i thought that was a really fun and interesting podcast and if you guys haven't seen that and especially if you don't know what gpt3 is watch or go google it right but um let me put all of these in our in our chat here um, yeah so here are all of those links to them but um that the gpt3 it is just amazing where the world is going um and Absolutely. we had a lot of fun discussing the stuff we watched uh, in, in the video on it um this actually this one i i enjoyed a lot because jackie had vendors at his company you know implementing rpa stuff and <laughs> He happened to be at the meeting and, and the person like gave up at a drop of the hat. Like, no, I can't connect to that. Um, so it was a fun discussion of no matter how good your tool is, right? It, it still depends on how good the person is applying the tool because if they don't know what they're doing or if they don't have the interest or for whatever, right? Um, you just, you get what you pay for, right? Um, yeah. And uh, this this one, we actually, I think I saw, was it Marches? I, I always butcher your name, but um we, I really love that phrase, bring back personalization to computers. Um, and so we actually had a little chat on that and how auto hockey is really about that. Uh, and this last one, this is, we um, we did three different tries at, at swiping and blue stacks. Um, the first time we, we ran into problems, we sort of solved it. the second time. We actually solved it, but unfortunately I had to hit pause in the recording. And so now I just released this this morning. Uh, we actually show you how the real code for doing it. So my that was my bad, sorry. Um, and lastly, I wanted to announce um, we're we're taking 2021 a little more seriously, and we're going to actually have um, a, a real podcast. So if you are a podcast listener, uh, they'll be in podcast format, probably in, in I think about three weeks because we started that new format in structure in, in version 90, um, and I think we're I think this was 87 was today. So we like have a little cushion. Otherwise, we would you know probably have to skip a week. Yeah, but um, that will be coming soon. Um, that's gonna be nice yeah and and and, and I, I need to both apologize let me, let me copy this and uh, but i do want to reiterate um you know i built this mentorship website if you're interested in getting a mentorship let me put the link in here you can sign up now this is it's been a you know a month i think a bit over a month since i released this um you know i just haven't had time to the the uh the there was no easy way to track the data um and it's also because i have all of these things, both on questions on, are you able to teach them and, and want to learn them? And it's really complicated that um, it, it's just a lot of stuff to, to work with. And so, and I've had 8 million other things going on. So um, 
yesterday I was playing with it. I have the kind of data with the people that have signed up. I'm, I'm getting ready where I can finally match them up. The problem is there's, there's like, you know, 30 different dimensions to try to match people up. So it's, it's, it, it is really complicated, but um, I'm going to get to that, let's say this week. Uh, but if you haven't signed up yet, um, you know, sign up if you want to either be a mentor or have a mentor. Um, Jackie and I, we actually, there was one of our podcasts, the other one was talking about how valuable it is to, to have a mentor and to be one. Yeah, because we, we kind of did that, right? It, uh, it, it made a lot of sense for us, at least. Yeah, yeah. And I can't tell you, you know, how many times I have jumped and jumped through big loop, you know, big step forward by watching Jackie or someone else you know, having them help step through something. And that's where I, I really get my really big aha moments. Um, but also when, when you do go to explain it to someone, it really, you have to know the stuff really well, you know, you formulate it in your head better. And so it just helps cement it in for yourself. So yeah, <clears throat> real time questions really do work, right? You're, you're sitting there, you're looking at them writing code and you're like, but what are you doing there? Or what, what did that do? Or yeah. <laughs> It, it, it really yeah. does help. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you how many times, even, even and you guys will see it like in a, in a podcast, Jackie will do something. I'm like, wait, wait, what did you just do there? Like, ex explain that to me. Because in, in, you know, in a forum post, you don't, you, you don't get that opportunity for that interaction or even understanding of, well, wait a minute, you know, what, what did that mean? Like, I, I had this problem right here. Um, in when we start reviewing the results here, the survey, you'll see, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little preview that um, uh, like people using YouTube uh, for learning out of hockey has gone up a lot um, compared to when we did this study several years back. And I think part of that is just because that nature of where you can watch someone developing code and they're explaining it as they go, it's just a very different environment. Now, we don't have the Q and A in that case, right? And that's where doing meetings like this where you can live see stuff happen and ask questions, it's just, it's, it's amazing the difference. So sign up if you're interested. Um, and uh, I did have a, here's a, a quick script for a highlight. I thought this was pretty cool given how much I use hot springs. The ability, uh, Scan made this, and let's, let me jump over to a studio here and show. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. I, this one was interesting too, but I, I didn't uh, highlight it, but uh, just let me, let me launch it real quick. So uh, this, this image is all written with um, this graphics out of hockey file and you know, both the text and the stuff behind it. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, I decided I was going to mention it, but for me, honestly, it was so advanced. I'm like, okay, this to me is something I can't I can't uh, explain really quickly and easily. So uh, check it out, though. I'll, I'll put the link. Um, no, I don't. I didn't save it here. I'll, I'll go find it and put the link in the uh, 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 chat in a bit. But this one, oh, that's the formula. That's not it. Oh, here we go. There we go. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. Sorry. Here it is. Yay. So in this script right here, let's start with this one. Um, you can, so here I'm putting in some HTML into the function, the set clipboard function. Uh, this is if you have like a heading, you can apparently allow you to like use CSS, right? In, in some of the tweaks you want to make to the HTML, which, which I wouldn't do. This part is if you're pasting into some tool that doesn't support HTML. So I'm gonna hit my, I'm gonna launch this. I'm gonna hit my hotkey, oops. Let me exit on the other screen. That's fine, I thought it should work. So, so I hit my hotkey, now it just sent my clipboard. So now when I paste, it pasted the HTML, right? So we can see here, um, I could click it and it would pull it up, but, um, I think that's that's pretty awesome, right? If you want to have, and of course, you don't have to use it with a hot spring, use it whatever you want. But the fact that you can basically store what you want, shove it into the clipboard in HTML format uh, is pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it is. It, of course, it, it depends on the situation, but, but sure enough, if you do this, paste, you could use it in Outlook, you email uh, sending or whatever. Um, and you can use it in a lot of different editors, that's for sure. Mm, you could probably use it on forums and other things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna make this up here. So let me re -run, run this. 
that this is why so if i'm in a like this is studio it doesn't support HTML. So when i paste here notice it's pasting this right but if i come in back to here and i paste um it has the the actual the correct url right so i just i changed those just so you can see uh it, it uses either this for you know this first first part if it's uh supports html where you're pasting and if it doesn't it uses this now just incidentally just because i've dug into this a lot before um i don't think really uh I, it was unfair of me to say this is doing that what what this script does um and i'm not i didn't look at it but i just understand how a lot of this stuff works now at least have an idea of it is it um it shoves both versions into your clipboard because <laughs> your clipboard has different types of formats, right? And it can have like, I don't know, like maybe five different types. Um, I know there's files and Explorer, there's pictures, there's rich text, the HTML, plain text, um, probably the uh, RTF, I think is another one. Um, mm -hmm. So it this one is just shoving it in those two formats for you. And then that's the really, to me, bizarre, but it took me quite a while to get it, is depending on what program you're in, when you hit paste, there is some sort of priority authorization given to it. And if, if and there's some sort of hierarchy and hey, if, if it has HTML and it looks in the clipboard and you have that there, it'll dump that in there. If it doesn't, then it'll go to the next level, right? So um, that's how that, that, is that my correct, Jackie? Is that? Yeah, it sounds about right, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that's, I think that's pretty slick that um, we can uh, shove stuff in there now easily, very easily, right? Obviously you have to understand HTML, right? You're building the HTML um that you want to shove in there but i think that's a pretty cool tool yeah sean he is actually asking if this could be used to convert html to a rich text yeah, um, no. yeah i'm actually not sure but no i'm yeah. i'm pretty sure with mace with and i we, we built a tool that actually tries to do some of that um but it's uh it's insanely complicated um that process if um, if you uh, remove the alt text here, just only use the, the very first HTML body thing and don't blank the alt text, just don't have the last two parameters of your set HTML there. If you then use it and try and paste it into HK Studio, what does it actually do? Oh, we probably need to reload it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh, come on. One. I forgot to hit my hotkey. There we go. Now when I hit paste, nothing. Okay. So it isn't able to do any type of auto conversion or anything like that. It just isn't able to do it. What What do you actually see here in the set clipboard function? Is there anything that would tell us anything about it? No. If you can read that, yeah, this is, I wrote, I wrote on the, I'm like, hey, thanks, Scan. You know, this is awesome. But I'm like, it's these things that just crack me up. Like, yeah, I'm not even going to try to, you know, understand this. Um, we could spend an hour um, starting to dive into it, right? There's, there's a lot going on. But um, if, yeah, it, it, it is a, uh, it was a big quest of mine, and actually, um, I know, I know, I think John's on here. John, at one point, I think looked into it as well of storing things in different formats and stuff, and it's just really, really complicated. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so I was trying to see if I could see something that would pop out, but not, not really. Now, one thing I didn't understand. Um, which is what I did think about asking him, this is the alt text. And I'm like, why don't you just put in the plain text for the alt text? But may maybe there's a good reason, right? I assume there's a good reason of why you don't just put in the plain text instead of, you know, doing that. I guess the reason that he's putting it in this way is to make sure it actually ends up in the correct location in the clipboard. Okay. So yeah. if you just, added an extra value, it would probably overwrite it or it would try to determine itself what it was. And by doing this, he's actually telling the clipboard that this is the alt text. So if the HTML fails, use this. That's my guess. Yeah. 
Coolio. Okay, let's uh, let's get into the uh, the results of the survey because there's there's a lot of stuff here. Yay, 2011. Yay! Oh. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we made it. Yeah. Um, so there were uh, 447 completes, and we had 129 partials, um, which gave us a total of 576 respondents. And you'll notice this this end down here. It's on most of the charts. It is going to change because as we go through the survey, you know, some people fall off and didn't complete the rest, right? And also, it's not going to necessarily make sense. The numbers aren't going to just suddenly go down because some of the questions at the end of the survey I have at the beginning of the report. So don't get too caught up in that. Um, I did think, and this is one thing I love about auto hotkey in general, is it's a global thing. And I can't tell you how fun it is to interact with people all over the planet, right? It's, I think it's really cool that, that um. It's, it's, you know, people are using it everywhere. Um, but this was each one of these dots is just a, a person that responded to the survey. Um, loads of fun. The, um, I had, when I shared the links to the survey, I, you know, I just had a, a tag to help me understand where they were coming from. Um, and so uh, a little bit over a third came from the, the, either a newsletter or email for me that I had sent out saying, hey, please take the survey. So thank you everyone that, that actually took it and took it. Um, and not just for me, but for everyone, right, everywhere. Um, uh, almost a third from Reddit. 15% uh, uh, came from a YouTube video that I had posted. I think I posted the only ones. Um, from 12 and a half percent from the, I think it's one in eight roughly is the Facebook group. Um, this was really surprising to me it was only 4% from the forum. Um, I just don't think it got visibility like we did before because last time we did this, I think the volume of the stuff was from the forum. Um, it was. Then, okay. And then a, a bit from LinkedIn. Yeah, it's interesting with the forum, but I think maybe the forums kind of have, I don't know if you can say it has information overload, but it, it does just have more, um, more sub forums, more right. Right. Um, things yeah. to, to actually dive into maybe yeah. is a way of putting it. Yeah. Um, so, so I which think is, that's one of the things. That yeah, might... which is incidentally, that's one of the reasons why we were creating the, a, a real podcast is there's, I forget, like a hundred million, you know, YouTube channels, but right now there's around 1 million podcasts. And so we're like, hey, you know what? We can actually stand out there a little better. Uh, and I know for a lot of people, they're actually, you know, people are digesting stuff there now. And so we want to make it easy for people to listen to the stuff wherever they want. Um, so that was another reason. Yeah, I was also kind of unsure where it was actually put on the forum. It was um, shared, you know, uh, uh, in a couple places and then Tank elevated it. He, he, which I was fine with, he wouldn't elevate, he wouldn't make it sticky on the main um, scripts forum. Um, and I said, oh, okay, that's, that's fine. But he did elevate it to a sticky on the like other topic forum, if I remember, you know, those stuff about anything or whatever that one's called. Um, but that is a select, you know, different group of people that go there. Okay. Be, um, I'm just looking for it right now. So that's why yeah. I'm not seeing it. So wasn't really sure um, if it was somewhere I just hadn't seen. But yeah, on the Ask for Help, where most people probably come, it, it's not really visible. No, so. I, I didn't post it there because to me it wasn't at all relevant there. Um, but yeah, anyway. It, you, you didn't find it relevant in the ask for help form? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Apparently you think differently. <laughs> no, no. I'm, uh, no worries. I, right. I, I'm not the one to decide where it's relevant, but no. I'm just thinking where it would have been most visible. But fair enough, if Tank didn't want to elevate it anyway, there, right. there's no reason to put it in ask for help. But that is by far, by far the most visited sub yeah. forum or sub uh, part of the forum. So if you don't have it there, gotcha. you don't really have it there. Cool. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, in four years, I'll try to remember that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, 
I'm, I'm, I'm just saying scripts and functions, 30,000 posts, right? Uh, off topic, 9,000. Um, ask for help, 234,000 posts. Just, you know, right? It, it kind of, the numbers in itself says a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so when we asked people about how they heard about AutoHotKey, um, nearly half just said they, they learned about it from internet search. Um, 20% said they can't remember. This will make more sense here in a minute when we talk about how long people have been using AutoHotKey that took the survey. 14.4% uh, said from a colleague. 8% um, uh, said from some sort of like articles. This, you know, this was weird to me as a forum post. I guess there's other forums. I'm hoping is they didn't learn about AutoHotKey from the AutoHotKey forum would be a little weird. Uh, I, I was surprised this was as low as it was, um, but it, I guess it gets back to most people like me, when I am posting stuff about auto hotkey on any sort of social media, I'm posting it into those groups. And so you're not gonna be a member of that group if you're not aware of it. Um, and then a few people apparently, just cause I annoy people with my e emails and stuff, um, might've heard of it from there. I'd say just, just as an FYI or whatever you call that, I've never on social media seen anything about Python. Just it's a really and I've been to Python, Python sites and right. Python forums and all kinds of stuff. No, when but I've actually yeah. never seen when you them. look at the volume of people that are using Python, it is it's insane. And you're absolutely right. You don't see stuff about it. So yeah. that's a valid point. Yeah. Um so here we go with how long have you been using auto hotkey? So uh, you know. A little bit over 10% has been less than six months, right? Even five, you know, some people, which was really cool that they actually took the survey, right? They're, they're that yeah. new to it, and yet they, they still took the survey, which is great. Um, but we had, you know, here is 25% have been using it eight, you know, over eight years, eight, eight plus years, right? Yeah. That's, that's really impressive. Um, very cool. So a lot of people have been using it for quite a while. I'm seeing a good spread here. I don't believe we saw the same thing when we did it uh, those I, four to five years ago. I, it was it was fairly similar, you know, Jackie. From memory, when, and when I say from memory, I'm I mean I felt the same way when when um, when I was looking at this. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I don't remember having it this way. But when I because I did across the questions where we asked them both times, I did a comparison. And uh -huh. if it's not in here, if it's not in this deck, that means there really wasn't a huge difference, right? And, okay. and I know this one isn't in here. So I'm like, it. there was a difference, you're right, but it wasn't enormous. And so I'm like, okay, because I didn't want to overwhelm people with too many slides. No, that's fair enough. But but if people came from mostly the forum before, and now they're coming from other places, that, yeah, that might enough. also skew it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a valid, and that's a valid theme throughout a lot of this is that we'll see. Uh, which I'll explain here in a bit, uh, something to remember. Um, uh, here, this was you know, what they regularly use auto hotkey for. And, um, you know, nearly 85% say hotkeys. What, yeah, what a shocker, right? Um, uh, uh, but still pretty high. Um, over half were saying hot strings and text manipulation, which is great. And actually, all of these still are all almost, let's just say they're half. So remapping, creating GUIs, mouse and window manipulation, awesome. Um, file manipulation, uh, using calm stuff. You, you know, one in four is doing regular inspections, honestly. And again, that kind of gets back to the tenure, I think, of the, the people who took the study, right? Because I think if that was a lot more newer people, that wouldn't be as high. Um, I, I like that regular expressions is in there, but that's because to me, it, it regular expressions come kind of right at your fingertips where normally you would think, where, where would I ever use that? But when you can put it in a hot string or a hot key and have it actually do quite a lot with files or texts and stuff. Oh, sure. I, I used them often for cleaning up stuff. You're right. Like I can, I can highlight it and I can, you know, rip out the HTML or whatever. And yeah, they, they were very, very helpful for that. Um, interesting enough, not, not a surprise, I guess, 20, because we know we, we, Jack and I both kind of believe gaming is one way people come into auto hotkey and then they realize they can use it for a lot of other stuff. So um, one in four saying gaming isn't a surprise. Um, no. But to see like, you know, sending a, a post, a Windows send and post messages as high as it is, is, is and, and DLL calls too, that's 
again, that's part of the tenure of this this group, right? That they're not um, uh, new people. Yeah, this, absolutely. The, the the web service APIs only you know roughly fourteen percent. That is, uh, to me, that's it's you know it gets back to is when when I worked you know in corporate America, like and even now I I love that I can perform API calls. There's so many services you can connect to and do things with. To me, that is one of the most mind-boggling things about auto hockey that I can do is that I can do all those things. Um, but maybe I just use, auto, you know, I have a lot of different needs that most people don't use, right? And so it could be why I get so excited about them and, and not many people are using them. Yeah, I'm, but again, web service APIs, I'm, I'm not sure back in the day when the first year I was learning this, I was working with a uh, tool that actually was displaying stuff in the web interface. And I figured out that you could actually send and receive stuff over HTTP. Um, and to me, HTTP requests that first year wouldn't have been a web service API. I, I'm not sure, sure it would have correlated it. I would have probably called it web scraping. Fair enough. Okay. Um, We'll see registry editing. Another one. I mean, yeah. For me, the need doesn't come up a lot, but it's it is great to be able to do it. Now, uh, you know, audio playback. Not, and the and actually, you know, what's interesting is yeah, we don't have it here, but I guess it would fit in this. Is this is SQL database access and storage? But I would say perhaps we we should have. I don't know if we put it here or somewhere else, but you know, either using XML, or, you know, or JSON, um, or even any files for that matter, the ability to save, you know data and pull it easily pull it back out kind of like as a service mm -hmm. is very very convenient um and and for yeah video playback editing actually you know i hope i selected that when i took the survey because i i actually do use auto hockey to help control vlc when i'm doing stuff and i would think that's part of it um, all right so let's go on here the next one which i think here now here again the vast majority of this list was in la the last time we filled the study here, obviously, I don't have all of those things, right? So what I did was I said, hey, what, what grew a lot and what shrunk a lot? So like yeah. here, um, GUI use actually went down. Um, so so those of you who don't know, they're, hey, we have a Udemy course for GUIs, intro to GUIs, check it out. Um, it's, it's good for you. Uh, interesting, look at this, Jackie. Now it's funny, like I don't remember it being that high before, but mm -hmm. regular expressions went down. Um, but regular so expressions people. were big on the forum at the time, so. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm really surprised that both of these, given given the differences in the tenure, you know, if we're saying, hey, these people were more likely to be, you know, using auto hockey for longer, I would have thought these would have gone up because these are a little more advanced things, um, even the GUIs is somewhat, right? Uh, yeah, but you're, I'm not sure if you, if the option to, I don't know if you have more options to select what you're doing. It, you well, it was a multi-select, so it, it, it theoretically shouldn't have mattered too much. Um, hmm. the, the total list was very close. There might've been one or two more options this year than before, but out of okay. this whole list, it wasn't a lot. Hmm. Um, and the only one that really, I mean, web scraping went up a bit, right? But hot strings were the only one and, and that might be partially because I, you know, again, which is what I wanted to emphasize, not that I'm all that great, right? But it was a lot of people came to the survey from stuff that I've done and I talk about hot strings a lot. Right, so it could just be a bias of the, the respondents that- I'm sorry, I was just gonna uh, mention something similar. Maybe that the two groups of people that have been um, uh, interviewed are two different kind of demographics. And maybe that's what is skewing the, the, you see this might not be that it shrunk, it's just that it's two different types of people. Maybe that might be it. Well, it's there. Yeah, I mean, they're the, the people are somewhat similar. We we talked about that a bit earlier, but it it still definitely could be a function of that. Um, but what's interesting is the uh, the tenure seemed to have gone up, and yet, like on these, the advanced stuff, um, it went down in usage, right? Which which is not the way I would think. If you have a, a people with more experience with a hotkey, I would think these would have gone up, not down, and this would have been the other way around. But um, yeah, it wasn't, so it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, now this, at first, it's gonna be a little confusing. Well, for a lot of people, right? Um, 
this is called an out of the tree. And so what I did, so you know, yeah, I, I should have mentioned at the beginning, you know, my, I spent 20 years as like a data scientist doing statistics, right? That's what I used to do all the time. This is why for me, it's so easy to field this study is I have a background in creating surveys. I have a master's in market research and I do all this stuff. One thing we can do is do a thing called an out of the tree that will plot the correlations. So if someone, let's say like these are the close, if someone said they use hot strings, they were also, and I know that because this distance, if we travel this distance is close, they were also likely to say they use hotkeys. And I know that because this distance is short. So the correlation, so if they if they, if they said they do this, they do this. If they didn't say they do this, they probably don't do this, right? So it's a correlation between the things. Um, and what's cool is you can lay these all out and kind of it, it, the data will help you see how people are using auto hotkey in patterns, right? And that's what I love about um, this is, it, and when you look at it, for the most part, it makes a ton of sense, right? There's a lot of stuff with the, the video and image stuff um, and, and gaming down here. Um, I'm finding it interesting that you, that audio playback editing is closer to gaming than like mouse manipulation. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the other stuff, the um, the BLL calls, manipulated calm. So these are the more advanced things, right? Um, and here dealing with web scraping, uh, web service APIs, web page manipulation. And apparently people are often using that to store their data, which which does make sense. Yeah. In, in, in regular expressions, apparently it's just kind of, there's no clear pattern amongst at least all the stuff, right? It, it's on its own branch entirely, right? It's just kind of out there. So yeah. it's, it's, it was in, in, it's in the middle, right? Which means it's kind of equidistant to all the stuff. So a lot of spread out people who use all kinds of the other stuff would also use regular expressions. Right, right. So, yeah. One. There we go. Okay, so. Was that one too many or? Yeah, yeah. Good old, I think I'll start clicking over here instead. Um, so favorite use of auto hotkey, right? So nearly a third said hot, that's what they like, love about auto hotkey, right? Is they can only select one in this case, right? So nearly a third said hotkeys, 15%, uh, right? Said hot strings. Um, and then 7.6% were GUIs was the next, the third thing on the list um, and on down, right? So actually interesting is gaming. So there's a big chunk of people who said that uh, they use it for gaming. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how it kind of falls out. You know, not many, almost nobody said audio playback, you know, or, or you know, that these are exclusively the, the thing they love the most. It's kind of an interesting list because that that is out of 100%, right? That's right. This one is a select, yes. It adds up to 100%. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, granted, it might be a little different because of rounding or, you know, with the digits, but yes. Theoretically, it would add up to 100%. So, so like saying manipulate other programs or gaming or Windows manipulation, those are actually pretty high in this list. Whereas with auto payback, that's like, yeah, it, it makes quite a lot of sense. Yep. A lot of people are using it like this. Yeah. But, but, uh, it, I'd still say you know, the, the big uses though are the, these two guys, right? Are, are a, a lot of people said that's that's what they're using auto hotkey for, right? Yeah, so yeah. That's 30, for almost half, you know, said one of these two things. Uh, now, this was the difference, right? The change, and that was, I think, pretty interesting was, uh, so, so GUIs actually went down a fair amount. Um, the manipulating you know, with COM went, went down a lot. Uh, Generally, text manipulation, which is interesting, went up. Um, and I, the the uh, the the other ones that went up must not have been. I oh, went no. I'm sorry. I'm, did I say that? That went down. I'm sorry. My bad. Okay. DLL calls went up. Web scraping went up. And hot strings were. Oh yay! That. And again, this might just be because one reason is I talk about them a lot, right? Um, someday I'll get Jackie to start really doing them, but um. When when we talked about uh, earlier where people came in from, a lot of people came from your um, newsletter or emails right. and from LinkedIn again uh, via you and and Reddit might also be quite a lot of um, 
Podcast That's the one morning. I would say might be a little. I mean, Geek Dude posted it there, uh, but even then, it's it's you know I don't do a lot on Reddit, so that's that's a, a different. Generally speaking, I, I don't you know I'm not doing stuff there, but um, the YouTube you know that was a big one probably for me. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's probably one of the reasons why. But I'm I'm guessing that one of the reasons that GUIs are going down is that. The other hotkey GUIs are slowly getting a dated feel yeah, to them. That's um, important. Just because people are getting used to uh, web pages and, and mobile apps. Right. And even right. though, I mean, I guess it, they probably it doesn't put it, feel as. Uh, right. As cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was going to say, we, you know, I don't think it was in the list, but, you know, working with controls. Um, you know, with especially with GUIs, right? Of of manipulating controls and just fewer and fewer programs have those older style controls that we can easily automate. So I could see uh, that go down. Yeah, it it seems like a lot more of what's actually happening, at least from what little I have time to look at the forums. It, it is more with web pages, more with browsers, and it makes sense with how everything is slowly shifting over to being uh, accessible online, even in a business sense. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that would probably move these things. But, um, and, and having said that, uh, you know, there's things like uh, Neutron, you know, and there's not, I think he has, Geek Dude has a different one as well. Uh, and actually, Maestri has showed me the other day. He hasn't. I don't think he's published it yet. But he he has, you know, a class he's built for displaying HTML GUIs with Auto Hotkey. Um, and so those might help at some point. Now, granted, they're not built into Auto Hotkey, right? And you have to have a lot of knowledge about HTML, or at least a good fundamental on it, to use them. But you can make some really pretty stuff. Yeah, but that's that's my own limiting factor is that. Unless the class is as built out as the built-in GUIs, right? You you add something and you put in a G label, then it just works from there on out as soon as you show it. And um, you might be able to do the same with some of the HTML ones, but because you also need the knowledge about the HTML and the CSS and the other stuff. Right. And you have no real tutorials and you have no real examples to go by and the, the learning curve to use them becomes a little too steep, perhaps. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I was talking to Geek Dude about, I think it was about Proton or whatever, his one for building pretty GUIs with HTML is, you know, I mentioned creating like a template, you know, for, for only a wrapper, you know, for his thing, for those of us who aren't these amazing gurus that understand all that stuff, just say, I just, I just, just need to, you know, edit this, right? Like make it simple for me. Cause um, yeah, they are quite complicated <laughs> when, when you're new to it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going here. Um, so this was, I thought very interesting. So the preferred IDE, um, what, what editor, you know, you're, you're using and, uh, um, Notepad plus plus was you know in the lead here with nearly thirty percent. Uh, Site, which of course is what I used to use forever, and then Auto Hockey Studios at fifteen point four percent. And I could have listed. There was a lot of write-ins on just little onesie twosie editors. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, this is the the breakdown um, on some of the. I was surprised at some of these bigger ones really well-known ones like eclipse um there was another one that wasn't even there are some that didn't have anybody select it i can't remember what they were called but um i was just i guess there's no built-in um auto hotkey you know uh tool to make it easy for them to to code an auto hotkey uh is my guess but i'm actually one. surprised that notepad has a 6.3 percent in there <laughs> who's coding in notepad like, <laughs> really? You, you yeah. know, when uh, when when I was going learning Python, I'd go to these Python meetups, and it was funny because they were um, PyCharm is that one of them? I don't know. There there were people using some really advanced editors, and then this one guy, you know, he's like, oh, I just use Notepad, and, and he's been a coder forever, but he's like, oh, it's just the the other stuff is just stupid, and I'm like, you know, I'm never yeah. going to tell someone here's how you need to code, right? You do. No, what no, you no. Do. I know it, it is surprising to me, actually. <laughs> yeah, you look at 
in 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 by the way, um, I, Isaiah is gonna um, who is also Raptor X, right? He he is going to at some maybe I think the next we we've lined up. I can't think R Rodolfo who wrote um, Pullover Macro Creator. He's going to be the next the topic in the next webinar. I think he's going to join us and show us some of the cool things he's built into the tool. And then after that, uh, so that would be March, maybe Isaiah will um, do a tutorial on using uh, VS Code, right, Isaiah? Yeah, that, that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. and, and he was going to show how, because he's been showing um, Jackie uh, and I on using it with tying it in to Git. And the functionality is really, really, again, when you're working with other people, Wow, really helpful. When you're working by yourself, I see how he, how Isaiah uses it. It is helpful, but boy, when you start working with more than one person, like it's it's crazy. So uh, anyway, so that's coming on the road. Right, let's look at the next right here, which I think was pretty interesting. Was um, this is the changes, and so uh, so TextPad went down some. So Sublime actually didn't. You know, I don't know why that was that was kind of borderline didn't really change, but. Um, site actually hit you know and i think part of it's your site it's it's been around for quite a while and, and it, you know isn't there a i think there's a whole new version of the actual site scintilla you know editor now right and it's it's getting dated um uh but notepad hey, hey the good news that's the good news is uh that went down from 10.6 percent to 6.3 percent um what was interesting to me though was was Studio was was the one that really kind of jumped up here, went from four point six percent to fifteen point four percent, and of course that Studio didn't didn't have much many years on it back when we did the first survey, uh, and and we and a lot of people on the forum and stuff has been talking um, in nice terms about it. Well, you know, and to me, part of it, of course, because I work with Mace Reef and stuff, right. Um, is is part of that, and and I made what thirty or more tutorial, but the and it's a great tool, right? So don't get me wrong. But the thing that I love about it is it's written in auto hotkey, like that. To me, it just makes it it's so hard to, to get away from because it's like this was written in the tool, but it's actually using you know to edit it and shows the power of auto hotkey, right? So I, I love that functionality, or I don't fact about it. Um, speaking of which, I think I have a slide here is uh, when, when I, when, so because I work close with Maestri, and I would do this if, if you know, if anyone else has the editor that, that they know the person to, you know, we can add this to the next year's study of like finding out why they're not using it. I don't care, right? But um, it was interesting is just a huge chunk of people just didn't know about it, right? That's why, they, that's why they said, why aren't they, if they didn't select studio, I said, well, why didn't you select studio? Um, and the vast majority of those people just said, I don't know about it. Um, and some, of course, which is the way I was for a long time, was uh, I, you know, I already had an editor that I preferred, um, which, which I, I totally get that. Yeah, you use quite a lot of time uh, to make the switch. You probably haven't made it completely yet. Um, I'm actually kind of the same. I, I switched to Studio, um, so I'm not really using Sete anymore. Uh, but recently, I switched to VS Code and. I've never looked back. <laughs> it's actually pretty straightforward. That's just what I do it in now. This works great. Yeah. Yeah. Now I I still I don't know about you, Jackie, but I, I still use site in that any almost anything else I do with text, I'll pop it in the site because it's such a light editor, you know, and it can handle big files and it's easy to do a lot of stuff. And so I'll I'll do a lot of my text manipulation in site just because. Mm -hmm. I find it really easy to, to do stuff in, but um, yeah, otherwise. I, more than anything, I use Notepad to just drop things in because it has no formatting. So there's nothing to actually cheat me or anything like that. Cool. All right, let's keep going here. Um, so where the, where people are learning on a hotkey, um, which makes, this is the one, if I remember correctly, we didn't have documentation listed when we did the study before. So um, I was really glad to see like this time when we listed it. And this is a, a multi-select option, obviously, right? Because these would be 140. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the uh, the documentation is huge. And it's one of the things, you know, we, we talk a lot about that, that the auto hockey documentation is really, really top notch, right? Very easy to understand. I love, I'm a big, I, I can, 
I've told you, I don't even read it, right? I, I jump to the thing, scroll to the bottom, and look at the example. And if I can't make sense of the example, then I'll go back and actually read. But usually I just jump to the example because I for that I can I can study it really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but the forums is such a it's another great unique thing about AutoHotKey, right? Very friendly people there helping um, just so much there. Uh, but then uh, then we get into YouTube uh, and Reddit. Uh, these both I think went up. We'll see here on the next slide. They went up a lot. Um, but Stack Overflow, hey, the automator, hey, again, that's, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, that much of a corner of the market. No, it's because people, you know, came to the study from me, I think. Um, but but, yeah, but um, also because you have, did you even have the automator back then? You might have. I no, know. I don't think I did. That's a good no. point. Yeah. So. yeah, it wasn't in this, the, the last survey. Yeah, so you're right. Um, it has become a resource. That's yeah, for sure. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, our webinars and podcasts, which was awesome to, to see people in there. Um, uh, even the Udemy courses we've put together is awesome. And Jack's uh, Computer Edge, which has, you know, he's got some great books on AutoHockey. Um, I've I've bought several. They're, they're very good resources. Um, and uh, Jackie, you're, you're still in here too. That's interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought about that. But yeah, I'm, <laughs> the renewal of that domain is actually coming up soon. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I, it, it, the hosting of it fits with a few other things and doesn't really cost me that much. So I'll keep it around for a few more years, that's for sure. But I'm not really doing anything with it. So I do totally understand why it's that low. Right. Yeah, no, so do I. That's why I, I, I should have prefaced that with, I know from just talking to you that you haven't actually done much with it. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it's how you and I first started talking, right? Yeah. In real, and that I, I realized you had the site. Um, and, you know, source, so again, uh, these I did leave in here because we, these weren't even available for, but it was great to see them there. But um, yeah, YouTube, and again, I don't think this is all me, right? The um, Civ Reborn, I, I went around and, and I must have bookmarked about, I'd say at least 30 different channels that are doing stuff without a hotkey. And so I've been reaching out to those, you know, owners, trying to do stuff together, just trying to grow, you know, knowledge of auto hockey here and talk to people. Um, uh, we'll see Rosetta code. That was interesting. Like, so for some reason, Rosetta code was much higher. Um, and, but Reddit, you know, that one, we, we went up a lot. I think, I think, you know, geek dude, cause I didn't realize it, it uh, until like maybe six months ago, that geek dude was a, uh, an admin on the Reddit, you know, for, um, subreddit. So when he posted the, when he offered to post the link to the survey, you know, I, I at that point I knew he was a, an admin and I said, oh yeah, that'd be awesome. So I, I think that really helped recruit um, from there. Uh, yeah, back in 16, my site was new. Then I worked on it some and then I stopped. And that's probably why it's just staying where it is. Yeah. Well, but you, you know, at the time, I think you had one link to it in your signature, but even then Jackie, I. I don't know if it was even in your signature because, or at least it wasn't the whole time. Cause I, I think I would have seen it when I was looking at all your, the times you'd helped me. And then finally I happened to notice it. I'm like, Oh, what's this? You know, and I went there. Um, but anyway. Yeah. But, but again, it's, it's like what reasons I just wrote out some stuff that I found interesting at the time. And uh, when people have a specific need, they might look at it or it might come up in a search on page 64 or something. Right. But right. other than that, probably not that big of a resource. Um, it, it, actually, so I was incorrect. I think earlier I said that these, the, the documentation wasn't in there, but it, but it was, and it actually, hmm. interesting enough, went down a bit. Now, both of these yeah. forums went down a little bit. Not, not but it makes sense when those being the real main ones back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Those Stack Overflow had maybe recently been pushed because it had became part of the old form where it actually linked directly over to Stack Overflow when um, Titan actually was mm -hmm. the owner for a short period. So Stack Overflow kind of rose at that point and Reddit, I'm not sure if there was that much of a Reddit presence, but there might not have been that many Reddit uh, users who actually filled out the survey back then, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. One, one in here that I, I, do, I did see in the write-ins from, from, from the slide before where we had the other, 
um, was I should have had Discord in this list. Um, oh, yeah. That, of course, back when we did the original one, that, I don't think that even existed. Um, or if we did, it was very new. But this one, I, I should have thought about it and you know added it for this because it, it, I think it's a good one. It is a really good one because you can now go on there and share your screen and get help and people can see your screen, right? And that's it's like having that mentor kind of relationship, right? Where you can get interactive support, which is really, really helpful. Yeah, we didn't have the IRC back then either, right? Back in 2015? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I don't think we listed it. Um, and I think it was written in back then, but I think I removed, no, well, I just didn't add it because I'm like, it's the IRC, right? Like, like who does, you know. Yeah, I understand why you didn't add it this time. Right. But yeah, it, it, it's kind of the same error. Right. We didn't have the IRC back then, and now we don't have the Discord. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's the same thing, right? Many of the people from IRC actually shifted over to Discord. So. Right. But it does show you how fast technology changes. Yeah. Um, and so here, this was, I thought this was really interesting, um, was, you know, here, here's the stuff that Jackie, you and I are heavily, now granted, I'm not all of YouTube, right? But, um, and there are a couple other Udemy courses, but, but still, this is for both of us, this is, you know, we're kind of people using our stuff and learning. Um, and then there's people using uh, Reddit and GitHub. Uh, and then, you know, Stack Over, this makes a lot of sense to me that these all kind of grouped together. Um, I, I would have thought this would have been up kind of, you know, more or so with us. But um, Jack was off on his own little thing down here. I always think I think he has always had kind of his own following, so it probably makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But it is um, if you haven't checked out his stuff again, um, it's uh, he's got yeah. a lot of. Or really good stuff. examples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. He hammers hammers a, a point, you know, a, a thing over and over and over. And I, I think it's a really good, if you know, if because uh, the great thing is, of course, if once you finally get it, hey, if you don't feel like reading the next five examples on it, don't just skip them. Right. Um, yeah, and it's it's structured as uh, the old kind of uh, online magazine type of layout. Right. It's it's in book form. You could probably print a lot of it and and do while he's he's actually working through it it's um right right um so we asked how many auto hockey scripts do you write per week on average and use per week um it's interesting so so people were saying that this, this is really interesting they they write more scripts than they actually use um and so it might be more of just one-off things, right? That they uh, they write them and then they tweak it and then they're done. Um, I find that really interesting. The differences. I do that. Yeah. I write a lot of scripts, write a lot of test code, and um, I did it uh, especially uh, when I actually help people on the sure. ask for help form. I would go in, see their what they needed write code, test code, post what I found and move on. So, yeah. Um, this next one, this this I thought was really, so this one, this is one of few, I didn't do it on the other ones, but if I remember correctly, this one, 22% um, said they didn't use any sort of competitive tool. This one, this these graphs, I'm sorry, these percentages are of those that did use a competitive tool, right? Otherwise, these numbers would be smaller, right? So, so just an FYI, 22% um, of people said they didn't use a competitive tool. And so I just removed them just so we could have a better idea of, well, if you are using a competitive tool, what are you using? Uh, fascinating to me that DOS is at the top of the list. Don't you think it's bash files that's actually at the top of the list? No, it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, enough, the, it, it's yeah, the it's the thing, same but... thing because because batch files are just a list of those commands, right? So it's the same thing, but um, I would say mainly it would be the top of at the top of the list because many people just want to automate Windows in some way, right? So if they're looking for a hot key to automate stuff probably they have tried before to automate windows in some other ways. And the, uh, 
I think Visual Basic is kind of like a whole language and thus is kind of like a list of commands and you only use the ones that you need. So I think it is easier to learn those than Visual Basic. So maybe that's the reason why you see it at the top of the list. And maybe most of the examples online, like how do I do this in Windows without having to you know, do it manually? Well, here's a DOS example. Maybe that's what's coming from. Yeah, I think a lot of um, usage is with batch files where you actually have a batch file to do a more advanced launch of a specific program. That's one of the uses I see a lot at least. Yeah, it's true. And deleting files. I think a lot of people need to delete files or <clears throat> pro program in the execution of a specific Pro, uh, you know, file a uh, program at a specific time, right? So those things you can do them easily on DOS. Um, the only thing Let's is that, I, that when you want to do the same thing in Visual Basic, you would have to learn a little bit, you know, <laughs> what the language is all about. So maybe that's the reason why DOS is at the top. Yeah. So, so and I'm going to have to apologize for this. Um, now that I see right here, there's none of the above. I, I thought I had removed that, but because that's in here, these are, so this is a true 38% of all respondents. Um, otherwise that number wouldn't be here. So uh, I didn't shrink it down on this one. I thought yeah, I, I, I was kind of weirded out by that because yeah. I had the other there as well. So I was like, okay, so 23% so said none of the above oh, right. and the other, which just wasn't really possible, but yeah. Right, yeah, so sorry about that. Um, uh, it was interesting here, and, and there's I have an interesting slide coming up here in a bit where we actually did all comparisons on on some of the competitors, but um, you know some people were you know a few used Blue Prism, a few used uh, uh, what was it Automation Anywhere was in here, UiPath. So those are the the leading RPA tools, right? Um, but yeah, and I agree. I didn't say anything, but I agree. I think it's about to DOS is so basic, right? That like it's so easy. That uh, it's an easy go to when you know when you need something quick and get it done, because you can find something in PowerShell and run it. But boy, I'll tell you, it, it's 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 got a bit of a learning curve to to be able to use it. All right, so let's get moving forward. So the um, big changes was uh, yeah, so auto it went up. Um, interesting enough, between the two, I think it's I down, 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 Sorry. down, down. Yeah, yeah, um, which is. I wish this is where I wish we would had like an actual paid industry study because I would love to know if that's just you know with our base of our group or it's a thing with auto is actually declining. Um, I know from Jackie when you and I will look at stuff at the search terms over time that it's been you know floundering a bit. It doesn't can keep it up with auto hockey. Uh, yeah, it's it's a long time since I last Google trended it, but but mm -hmm. yeah, at the time it, they they have kind of had switched. Uh, auto hotkey on the rise and auto it on, on the fall. But other than that, I'm, I'm not sure that auto hotkey has, or auto it has really shifted that much. I do just believe that you might have been able to pull in quite a few people who have used auto hotkey as their really first thing. And because I'm not reading the ask for help and stuff like that as much as I used to, um, I'm not sure if auto it is brought up as much as it was back in 16. It was a hot topic. Is oh, it better to use auto hotkey or auto it? Right. But right. I don't see that question as much anymore. You know, so, you're, yeah, I totally agree with you. Right. It's a very rare where that comes up now. Um, I see, uh, Ali mentioned the last version of auto it is for three years ago. It's, it says it's not up, uh, you know, and, I mean, auto hockey, I think you could, to some degree, it, it's being updated, but the updates are minor, you know, little fixes yeah. and tweaks. Uh, but yeah, and then it gets, which is, you know, in some ways a good thing, right? It's just, it's a very stable, you know, kind of set where it is thing. Yeah, but with auto it, which I, I can't really speak for it because I'm not part of that community, they, they had an, an idea of building a lot of the stuff into auto it at one point. Right. Um, but of course, because they haven't updated for three years, that they might not feel the same degree of, of 
crispness as they did when they kept adding new stuff to it. Uh, whereas with Outer Hotkey, it has for a long time just been people doing scripts and functions, UDFs. As... Yeah, no, I think it's a, that's an interesting take, Jackie. That's a good point. All righty. Um, and then this, so um, don't look at auto hockey at the moment. Just this is looking at the correlations of, of again, if someone uses uh, Visual Basic, um, they also used, you know, PowerShell and DOS, right? So this is how the correlations are where they are. Um, what was really interesting, this one to me was like, uh, where is it? Auto it is way down here. Like it's not at all related to, to up, up around these things. Um, automation anywhere. Uh, is is down in here and blue prism is here which is they're at least off the same branch but then well where, where's uh you, you i thought i thought ui path oh here ui path is up here right so that was really interesting to me um and selenium is up in here which that kind of makes sense to me uh but these like you know macro kind of recorder stuff that's where like to me i i'm surprised Ottawa is in with this bit you know this group Now, auto hockey, because this was specific question was about competitive tools, auto hockey is not in this list. Um, however, I reran it and I'll show you here, this is in black and white, but here you can see what I did was I said, if someone said they use auto hockey and it was 70% of people said they use auto hockey, so it wasn't everybody. I reran it um, and that's how I know here you can see when this is redone and auto hockey is here, everything will shift a little bit, but basically just envision Envision it up here, right? So that that's and I just these these trees take me time quite a bit of time to to uh, color and, and to change, and so that's why I didn't do the other one. But just yeah. FYI, if, if auto hockey wasn't this graph, it'd probably be up around here, just so you get an idea of where it fits in. Mm -hmm. Um, now this one, this is this and actually here. So you see, so auto hockey, interesting enough, right? 68.9% uh, said they regular program in it. So I was really glad last year or last time we filled the survey, we didn't ask, you know, we didn't have auto hockey in this list and I couldn't do that graph that I'm about to show you here on the, the that added tree, which is really cool. But, um, you know, so a third of people using uh, actually, so a third of people, a third of our respondents are using Python um, and then JavaScript and HTML, and Visual Basic, right? DOS is down here at 25, you know, 0.7%. So this is the, they're regularly programming in. Um, and then some of the more advanced stuff is how I would basically classify these down. Although Selenium, you know, isn't uh, that one, apparently a lot are, you know, and here, the thing is auto hockey can be, especially with Chrome, the Chrome class and Calm for IE, uh, it's a big competitor for Selenium, right? Yeah, I, I find it interesting there, there's the other there as well. So something is missing from the list when it's at 11%. What's that? The other, oh. right? Oh, it or, was a uh, lot of different write-ins. Yeah, I okay. mean a lot, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, now here were the changes compared to before, right? And so, um, yeah, the C++, Java, C, those all, you know, dropped quite a bit in PHP. Um, yeah, but then, you know, crazily enough, how is Visual Basic higher than it was, you know, back in 2016? Like, again, that, that's got to be with just the, the respondent variance, I, I think. Yeah, but COBOL, right? Yeah. Really? But yeah, fair enough. Um, but now the Python, that makes, you know, Python's been growing like crazy, right? So that one makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, Selenium is just, it, it, I, yeah, you're right. Is someone, uh, Ali asked if it's a language. Um, I, I, I don't know if I would call it a language, but it, you know, it's an architecture, I guess. I don't know. Jackie, do you have a better answer? I that? think that's a good way of putting it, right? It, yeah, I, I wouldn't call it a language either, but it, it's a tool you can use. It, but yeah, yeah, and, it, and, and sorry, Jackie, um, people wrote it in a lot last time. And so I'm like, you know what, I'll put it in here because 
it is a, you know, it's a competitive tool and that's kind of the angle where we were going or, well, I guess not competitive, sorry, but, but you're right. It's not a language, um, but people wrote it in a lot. And so I figured, you know, let's just put it in and see where it falls. Um, so let's look at this, ad this one. I think this is a really, really interesting one. Um, and where, oh, here's auto hockey down here, right? With uh, Lua and Doss being the closest. And then Pascal, like that, that is so weird to me. Um, I get the C++ and C, um, but then this is, is that C sharp, right? The C pound is sharp? Yeah, C sharp, yeah. With ASP and .NET, like, it, but again, the HTML and CSS or JavaScript, right? That that makes sense, a lot of sense to me. And even the PHP is, I would have thought that'd be a little closer, but you know, it's, it's around there. It's pretty close. Mm -hmm. And then you got Java and Fortran, you know, more kind of serious stuff. Uh, Python, Selenium, and Perl and Ruby that, yeah. So up, up in the general area, I'd say there's just a lot of, this is a lot of web-based stuff, right? Um, no, well, how did the uh, Ruby actually uh, do on, on the general uh, regularly used one? Just, oh, it's all the way down there. Oh, fair enough. So not a lot. No. Um, but I, I think this is pretty interesting to see what other, you know, people that use auto hockey are also using Lou. And I know I've, I think Isaiah had talked to me about that some, but it's a very interesting language. Um, and and I, I'm hoping pretty simple, but um, I might have to look at it at some point. Now here, um, for, for competitive tools where we had at least 20 respondents, right? So each one of these tools, anything that had less than 20 respondents, I didn't list it. Right, so because otherwise you really question the percentage. Even twenty is kind of low, but most of these had a lot more than twenty. Um, a few of them were getting down there. But um, what was interesting is we said, "Hey, is Auto Hockey? You know, is this tool better than Auto Hockey on the par with Auto Hockey, or worse than Auto Hockey?" And so I sorted them basically compared to the competition of what they thought. So the most people thought, you know, the um, UI path was actually better than Auto Hockey, forty percent out of and again, considering this is an all hockey study, that, that says something, right? That's it's pretty amazing that um, four out of 10 people said that UiPath was better than auto hockey. 25% um, said it was on par and, and still you had nearly as many that said it was better say it's worse, right? Um, this, how, how does this make sense? Um, um, I became unsure of the people who picked right. who are UiPath Right, forty percent of them said that it was better than our hotkey. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So if whatever people said they use, I followed up with now rate that compared to auto hotkey, right? And mm -hmm. um, this was uh, 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 to me a really really interesting thing, and, and thankfully we had a, a a good total number of respondents, right, to help us understand it. But um, this this is crazy, right? So automation anywhere, you know, half, or I'm sorry, what is that? These, that color, that red color is kind of ugly, but um, yeah. what is, is that? 55%, I think. Yeah, 55%, yeah. Um, yeah, my eyes are having a problem focusing on it for some reason, but anyway, um, are saying that the you know, automation anywhere is worse than auto hotkey, right? Like it, how much does automation anywhere cost to implement? Like, yeah. you know, that, that is saying something, right? Um, it is. See, so yeah, I, I found this is a really interesting. I um, mean, in here, you know, this is really interesting. Like we were talking about the DOS in a batch file usage, right? And yet, seventy-six percent of people are saying it's worse than auto hockey, and yet it's used a lot by the target audience. And it gets back to, like, they're probably just filling a niche that either don't know how to solve with auto hockey, or maybe auto hockey is not available for them in that you know where they're using it. Um, and so they still just have stuff that they've you know used before. I think that's that's the thing with what they've used before. I know from a friend who who recently um, started using Hotkey a bit of work as well, and he is using it to convert stuff like uh, batch files, 
right? They're, they're using batch fires throughout their organization for launching and then doing different types of stuff like that. Um, and you can do just as well with the compiled auto hotkey or just an auto hotkey script for that matter. So, so yeah, that's that's one of the reasons he would say he was regularly using batch files, not because he was writing new batch files, but because he was utilizing them. Yeah, yeah, and I still have, you know, I mean, I I, I still jump to the command prompt and we'll do some DOS stuff in DOS just real quickly and easily because. Just sometimes it's just it's easy, right? It's sure kind of and stuff, but yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Um, so asking about if they use auto hockey at work, right? So nearly sixty percent, um, coming up on two thirds said they they share with their colleagues and teammates, which is really great to hear, right? Mm -hmm. um, this this was this was a bit one I threw in there for for personal reasons. But you know, I asked you, does your supervisor like that you use auto hockey at work? You know, I'm sad to see, but it doesn't surprise me that you know, nearly half, a little bit over half, you know, said that their supervisor likes it, right? And and it's just because I run into things where I had several of my supervisors say not to automate things, and um, and of course some of them just don't, and, and part of it's because they don't understand what it is and what it does. But um, I was curious how much of a common thread that was, and um. <laughs> Let's hope someday that goes away. I'm unsure how to actually interpret this because for me, in many of the situations I've been in, the reason I wouldn't say that my supervisor likes that I use a lot key at work would be because he wouldn't know. Right? So, so I wouldn't be able to say that he liked it because I said I'd never told him. Only in recent years, I've actually told people above me of my use of our hotkey, which have been great, have liked it. But yeah, that might be one of the reasons why it isn't higher than it is, because it's still maybe quite a personal tool. Right. Um, I saw Philip mentioned Pega systems, um, wasn't listed, and I was just typing it out, but now, um, it, it, there was an other box where, where people could write in and I captured that, but for the most part, um, everyone wrote different things, right? There wasn't a common thread of uh, more than one, one or two or three, maybe at the most mentions of different systems, right? And that's where in survey research, it gets really hard to, you know, come up with this nice solid list of everything without overburdening respondents to look at a big list. Um, and then usually use that open end stuff to say, hey, I should have had this one, which is what we did before, right? I added them in when, when you see a common thread. But um, yeah, so they could have written it in. Um, but uh, th there wasn't anything that really jumped out that was really clearly obvious as something that should have been in there. Uh, but yeah, that, that's why. Um, oh, I, and we didn't mention this stat. I thought that was interesting is, is uh, you know, one out of, Five, five. So it's you twenty know, percent. Um, also, you know, their colleagues are editing um, or slash programming on the hotkey. So that's actually higher than I would have expected. Jackie, what what do you think on that? Mm, that's also higher than I would have expected. But but again, here you have sixty percent saying that they actually share with colleagues and right. teammates. Right. So so the 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 vast majority of, of the people in this survey are talking with uh, colleagues and teammates. So it would make sense for them to also um, edit right. or program in our hotkey. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. Um, so over half that they'd like to get paid to code on a hotkey, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, almost one in three said they like to buy auto hockey programs, which is great. And uh, um, a small percent said they'd like to sell the programs. And we know, you, you know, at some point, we're, maybe we'll do that on the topic. I know we talked about ways to make money with auto hockey, but maybe we should have one feature, you know, specifically about trying to find, you know, good ways to literally to sell your code, right? To tools you can use. Um, the problem is it's a vast, there's a lot of things that, um, that you got to plan on, right, and 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 cover for. Um, 
If you haven't seen it, I, I recently just did a video, by the way, of how to compile your, your scripts using AutoHotkey H, which will lock it down a bit more, um, which, and I would definitely recommend if you're, if you are planning to um, sell your scripts, right, that I would definitely consider that approach. Uh, is, is definitely use the Impress or UPX uh, compression, but also doing it with AutoHotkey H just kind of locks it down a bit more. I see Marche uh, mentioned here making money like is a high time to prepare a shop. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's high also time to prepare a shop. It's also a, a somewhat taboo thing for you know, like I I that video I just mentioned I posted it on the Reddit forum, and uh, you know, and if you, first off if you're from the Reddit forum, plug your ears now. But um, you know, the most people there hate me, like or whatever they they don't like selling your anything about making money and selling your stuff. Right, and, and, and a lot of people not a hot key that way. Personally, you know, I, I I think my time's worth something, right? And if I'm going to help teach people stuff, hey, you know what? I I don't think it's a problem to to you know feel like maybe I should be you know get something for that. But um, yeah, it can be. Jackie and I have talked about this a lot. There's just some people think it should all be open source, you know, and everything. And why should you ever do this? And hey, the world, everything should be free, right? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, but AutoHotKey has quite a few years on it, and it it was a part of an open source movement from the AutoHotKey co uh, AutoIt code. So sure enough, with the age that people have been following AutoHotKey, some of them will have some strong feelings about that because that is one of the reasons AutoHotKey is what it is. And if the AutoHotKey community, you know, the, the vast majority of it is on Reddit and, and maybe the forum, and they could be afraid that if everything is locked down in um, sell, sold software, that a lot of what AutoHotKey is wouldn't really work the same. Mm -hmm. I still am fully for being able to sell whatever you're able to automate. Why shouldn't you? But I fully understand that the core parts of our hotkey, the forum and other things, they shouldn't have anything to do sure. with ads or selling or anything like that. But why shouldn't the hotkey community be able to benefit from someone actually making a living off of their skill or their idea or whatever it might be? When I was talking to the to, to Rodolfo, the, the pullover macro creator guy, about his thing, and I, and I just asked him like, "Hey, have you ever thought about charging?" And he's like, "No, no." When I when I when I went to 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 do something, with, I discovered all the hockey. When I went to learn it, I found out there was no sort of tool for this. Oh, there were there were options, but they were paid options, and and that annoyed him because he didn't have money, and so he created it partially to be free. And I, and I told him straight up. I have no problem with anyone wanting to give away their stuff, right? Like, absolutely. If you want to do it, I'm not, I don't think I, I would never say people should sell it. It's just, if you want to sell it, why should I be criminalized, you know, or, or looked down upon just because, you know, I want to sell something. Um, and, and also I'd say is, which, which is what compared to like automation anywhere and UI path and, and blue prism and stuff, auto hockey, you can write, you can create programs right from scratch and do cool stuff with it. It's not just automating other programs, right? You can write your own, come up with your own ideas and everything. And you know, that to me is like, hey, you know what? If I want to make some money for that, you know what? Yeah. If that's the way, you know, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Let's keep plugging along here. We've got a few more. Um, so now we're kind of getting into the results of you know who took the survey. Um, so over uh, one in five worked at like a, a high tech company. Um, one in ten was at a, at a like a school type of thing. Um, or they're in school possibly. Uh, and then they're working in service and medical. Then it, it just kind of, you know, flows along here, uh, falling away on the, the lower level stuff. Arts, that's interesting. Yeah. But that's maybe the video manipulation and the audio editing. No. Well, oh, media, I would think so. But yeah, I think- Yeah, sure, of both of those. Yeah, so that, that was interesting. Um, this, this was really interesting is, uh, you know, the, the size of the companies that people work for. And it, it's, and again, there's a lot of companies that are, you know, in these first two groups, when you look at the total distribution of companies, there's a lot that fit in this. And then 
there's not a lot of companies that fit in this, but there's a ton of employees that work at big companies because of the nature of how many employ they employ, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting to see an almost kind of equal distribution across all company sizes. Yeah. Um, for the job function, yeah, people work in, in IT, which isn't surprising at all, or programming. Like if I remember correctly, Jackie, I don't think we had programming. We didn't have one of these two. I think it was programming listed before. Okay. Maybe programming, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but engineering, um, we didn't have student either. So that was one we added and, and that helped, I think, people take the survey. Uh, but it was very interesting to see quite a variety of what people do, um, you know, using auto hotkey, right? There's, it is a, a thing that people use with very, very different backgrounds. Yeah. And let's keep going. Um, so here we go. Years of experience, right? Over half have you know more than ten years of experience, right? That is amazing to me. Um, That's work experience, you think? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? And the, mm -hmm. it's a live deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so sure. yeah. So that was interesting. I'm trying to cruise through these. They're also you're very quick to digest, right? But respondent age, um, very interesting. Not not a lot of people, you know, under 18. Uh, but you know, after that, it, it's pretty steadily over 26 with the vast majority um, of people. Uh, which, you know, I don't know. I mean, our, our younger kid. I, I know to some degree. Like my son, he's 13. He'll be 14 soon. He's he has robotics class and stuff in school. But I, I don't know if they're going to view coding in the same way, right, with the, the younger kids these days. No, I'm not sure either. So it, it's, it's we, we would never really end up knowing, right, because I'm not sure that the actual current typed out language right. for the deeper parts are going away anytime the uh, too soon, but again, if let's say the um, the podcast we had earlier with the um, uh, GPT three, right, that's what I was um, saying. Right. So, so if you have algorithms or AI that becomes good enough, mm -hmm. and apparently that was one of the examples we had in that podcast was that. The AI was able to actually write uh, HTML code from plain text. So, if you told it what you wanted, it was able to make that uh, HTML element for you. So you just typed, uh, "I want a red box with green text," and then it would make that web page element for you. Red box with the green text, and then you could say, "Make the text bold or whatever you wanted," and it did it. So, so if you continue on that path, you might end up not needing people to write that much of the intermediary code. You would probably still need people to uh, write out the deeper parts of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. No, I agree. All right. Oh, look, we're almost there. Um, this one is uh, not a surprise. Well, sort of not a surprise. Now, here's the thing. Let me, let me tell you this, in online research, like I said, I, I spent 20 years in market research, right? Online research, females are much more likely, it's like a 60-40 mix to, to respond to surveys compared to males, right? So the fact that we got 97% of our respondents are male, right? And 3% female, and yet females are more likely to respond to a survey. Like, this just tells you just how skewed, you know, the, the gender, we're, we're, let's put it this way. There's a reason why I started a mentorship site for auto hockey and not a dating site, <laughs> because it's it's you know it's a uh, it's all I mean it's so heavily male it's crazy and I'd love to to try to get more females interested right and just um, it's just not something that that women generally speaking you know are are doing yeah and I think that's in programming in general it, agreed. Right. They 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 still become part of, of those big companies or IT companies, but then they become managers or so uh, yeah other types. And they of, make good uh, managers often, right? It, yeah, it, sure it, enough, or bosses and, and, or whatever. 
And oh, again, yeah. they do make good programmers. It, it, I think it just has more to do with the interest, right? They just, uh, for whatever reason, men are, it's like being mechanics too, right? We like to tinker with stuff and solve problems. And I think women are, are have other skill sets that they, they like to do. And uh, yeah, I, I would just love to see more women, you know, use it and benefit from it. Okay. And here is, uh, um, so, and also, so I asked in the survey if they wanted to sign up to be a newsletter. And let me put in here, if you're not a part of it, uh, in what I also wanted to do now, I, I haven't had time to work in this yet, but let me put it here. If you do want to get my, uh, the newsletter from the automator, um, what I'm working on is a way to go to places like the Auto Hockey Forum and um, Reddit and wherever, right? A couple of the main sources where there's a lot of stuff, a lot of topics. Scrape the data, categorize the data basically off of like the usage stuff, um, how you use auto hockey, right? And then, so this will give me every, like let's say every two weeks, I'll have a list of new scripts that are out there based on topics. And then, you know, you will have your preferences of what you want to learn about. Um, and then someone is going to go through and actually say, out of all this list, here are the, the big, here are the really cool ones, right? Here are the, the neat ones that were on that topic. And then we'll do this giant mail merge and create like a customized newsletter for, for everyone doing it. So that's in the works. Um, that's not right what's here right now. But if you want to get signed up for newsletters for that, um, the other thing I'd like to just say is thank you all for this because 74% uh, said that, hey, if we have any questions, they were willing to, to follow up on the, the, the questions about the survey, about their entrance, you know, but they responded. Um, and that's, this is usually, you know, much, much lower. So thank you all for being helpful and offering help and for filling out the survey. Yeah. Um, and that was it. Let me, I'm going to hit the stop recording. And then uh, if we have any questions, we can, uh,